Welcome back. Today we are going to be taking another look at the new and improved MiG-29. We have the new R27ERs as well as some new radar modes which definitely help the quality of life that this thing has. One small thing before we get started. I know this kind of breaks up the video but if you guys have done the winter quest and you need like one or two more tasks and you were looking to actually GE them don't forget to do so because by tomorrow I think it is you will not be able to do it anymore. And then it will disappear and all your work will be for nothing. I'm not telling you to do it. But for the guys that actually forgot it. Make sure you don't forget. This is a little bit of a PSA. The R27 ERs are some of the best missiles we have in the game right now. And together with the fact that we can now slave the radars a lot easier. This thing becomes a lot nicer to fly. And a lot more effective in these close range fights. So if you go into the controls and you type in radar among the aircraft thing here. You have two things that you want to assign. The first one is going to be number 9 that I have. It's Radar-IRST Beyond-Within Visual Range Combat. You want to assign that key and you also want to assign your IRST-Lock Radar Mode. Which I have right here. I have it on Fiverr as well as my, my mouse. And I have it on a lot of buttons because you actually have to use it now. This is not the same thing as the ACM mode. Which is the thing we had previously. Which I will show you in a second if you are not familiar with this. Because this right here was absolutely horrible to use. It very often picked up the wrong targets. It didn't really differentiate between anything in the box. Just picked a random unit it felt at times. But now, and if you go back to my controls, I press 9 again. I get this right here. You see this little bracket. And whenever I press the 5 key, or the 1 key that I have on my mouse, you can see that it turns into a little bit more of a square. That's what you want to use. So if I now look around, and it will not go very much beyond below your nose anymore. Not like it did previously. You cannot look directly below yourself. Which I think is a good change. It shouldn't have the uh, capability to look through the nose. We don't have a F-35 that can see through the bottom of their aircraft. We drop the fuel tank real quick. So we take off. And now if I put this box on him. And I make the box. I press 1. It should lock him up. But keep in mind on the bottom right you can see it. On the side of the right, you see it when I move left and right, it, it rotates. But it also says 10 kilometers. So beyond visual range combat does not really change with this. The only thing that really changes is if you get within visual range, you can actually lock people up by simply looking at them. And I think these missiles can reach very, very far. And if you want to do that kind of stuff, you can definitely still do that with the normal radar modes. But if you're in combat, being able to do that is absolutely paramount. Now if you want to look, lock people up from further away, what you can do, and I'm going to press 9 here. So I go back to my search, pulse Doppler mode. And if I then go to the radar modes with the 6 key, and you can go back there to see what it's called. You can see that I can cycle through them. I like to use the search PD HDN mode. This has a very strong capability of locking in the head-on beyond like 9 to 8 kilometers. You can see the little grayed out area at the start of the cone where it won't see anything. And in that range, your radar is basically useless. However, it is very good at picking up targets beyond it. Now I can show you right now. I have it at the start of the other MiG-29 video that I have. But if you actually want to just go into your normal mode, you can do the exact same thing. But this one is a lot more finicky because now you need to wait for the lock to pop up. You need to hope that it selects the right target. And then you can press 5. Whereas if we go into the normal mode and we go to the HMD PED. And you can just look at whatever you want to look up. And this is just 20 times more, or 29 times more convenient, I should say. Just like that. Together with the R27 ERs, this makes for a very nasty combination. The only downside is that you only have two of these missiles. But trust me, it's more than enough. But let's get right into the gameplay. But before we get started, thank you to all my YouTube members as well as my Patreons and everyone looking to get this decal to put on their vehicles. You can do it by using the discount code down below and any purchase you make, you get a 3% discount. I get a little cut of it and you get the decal on top of it. So everybody wins. So first of all, I want to show you one clip where I still use the old radar modes. This is with the old ACM mode. You can see that it picks up basically everything. So I'm using the IRST mode because it has a little bit of a smaller ACM. And then I try to switch on over to the normal lock. And it's super finicky. And it takes a lot of time. And if you're in a stressful scenario. This might get you killed. This might really just not work out for you at all. And you can see that I'm trying to pick up targets. In the end I go for the MiG-29. That's kind of high. It's also priority because he's a MiG-29. He goes down. And we clear the furball kind of. 
And then there is only one guy over there. So then the ACM is perfectly fine. But you saw how finicky it was at the start there. When there is multiple targets closely together. Especially if they're flying on top of each other. That you can't really pick what target you want. And very often what I would do is I would fly like this. Like kind of horizontal. So I could scan the horizon. And see if it would pick up something. But then again you can't just pick out what you want to get. Of course you can by cycling through the radar commands. But it's just it's too tedious to do in the middle of a combat scenario. You need you basically need three hands. And you, I don't know about you guys. But I just don't have three hands. Sure I have three legs. and But I can't really put that other thing on my, on my keyboard. Because it just flops all over the place. And it presses all the keys at once. So it's really not convenient. I need to use my hands. And I just only have two of those. Right now at this point it doesn't really matter that much anymore. Because with the R60Ms you can slave them to your helmet anyway. So it's not as... That's vital. It doesn't really matter that much. And luckily if people don't turn their afterburners off. They're just going to eat these missiles for breakfast. Kind of like the F7F does with jets. So now we have a pretty advantageous position. It's only a MiG-27 and a Mirage F1 left. So at this point I'm not really too worried about anyone here. The MiG-27 doesn't even flare it. He eats the missile as well. And now we have one guy left. And there's two of us. So all we have to do now is clean up the last dude. And make sure that the last guy doesn't actually jump us. Because there is a dude somewhere that isn't spotted. That we still have to find somewhere. The Mirage is going very slow. It's a horrible plane anyway. So we just kind of dive on him. We squeeze the trigger. And this 30mm makes short work of basically anything you look at. And just as we crit that guy. And he's about to spin into the ground. The MiG-23 pops up directly above us. So right now we want to go defensive. We don't want this guy to get on our 6. So I'm... Pulling up behind him. I don't want to pull too hard. But it's kind of hard not to do that in this thing. Especially on low-ish fuel. And I'm just trying to run this guy down. And I'm gaining position. I will auto accelerate him in the long run. And if he keeps maneuvering. Then I should be able to reel him in pretty easily. But unfortunately for us. We don't get an 8 kill. Because he just slams it into a head on. So now let's look at how the new missiles work. You can see that I have it assigned. It's on my, my camera. It's on my cursor I should say. I go load the dodge the head on with the missiles. And then I just look at the F-14. There we go. Locked up. Shoot the missile. And that's all I have to do. And I will win that joust. Because the 27ER is just vastly superior. Then we have an F-4J as well as an FG-1. And I shoot the F-4J first. Because he has AIM-7Fs. The FG-1 doesn't really have that dangerous of a missile set. And then we just kind of start looping. Because that's a J-27D on our 6. Does that really matter? Not too much. I just want to make sure that he doesn't actually park himself behind us. So I want to kind of turn into him. But in the end it didn't really matter. Because he gets absolutely dicked down by the MiG-23 ML. So we turn around. We go back for the FG-1. And I mean at this point we are kind of in the clear. We don't really have to worry about too much. So I will chase up this FG-1. I lock him up with an IR missile. But he's slightly in the cloud. So I'm not able to get a good lock off. And then I just turn back in and just gun him out of the air. He gets set on fire. He ends up crashing into the ground. And then the last guy is going to be this F4E. And I wanted to show you the ACM mode. So I turn that on. And he ends up getting so scared from the RWR noise that he just puts it into the ground. Pretty solid choice if I do say so myself. And here we go with another example. Right, this is so nice. There are so many units in front of us. So I can just look at the F16. It's a very tiny box. And that's what makes this so nice. It's a super small box that you can look... Almost pinpoint. I feel like this is almost unusable if it comes to real life scenarios. But maybe it isn't. I'm not a pilot. Otherwise I wouldn't be making YouTube videos on this godforsaken game. But in terms of gameplay. It's super super nice to have such a pinpoint precision radar. That you can just kind of look at people with. Because normally when there's multiple people together. It's very hard to pick out the target that you want. And right here. A4B flies directly through the radar scope. And it doesn't instantly pick it up. And I'm not sure if this thing is harder to, to fool. I'm not sure if it's less likely to pick up all the targets. Or if that A4B was kind of notching us. I'm not entirely sure. But this radar mode feels absolutely rock solid. Just like this plane makes me. The MiG-29 right now is probably the favorite plane at top tier for me. I've been thoroughly enjoying this thing. And I don't really often say that about top tier. I've been team killed. I've been getting super unlucky with desync servers and everything. Really... But even then I didn't really, well sure it pissed me off, but it didn't really upset me too much. I still like flying this thing and I will make another video where I showcase the flight performance of a little bit more. Because I just have simply too much footage. I've been flying this thing quite a lot, I have 200 kills now. I know that's not the most, I know some people already have like a thousand. But I've just been really enjoying this thing and 
It's one of my favorite planes of all time. I know it's not the best thing of all time, but I just really like the look of it, the feel of it, and what it represented in real life. I know it's not the best thing, but we are all allowed to like things. Oh, sorry, this is the internet. That's not allowed, actually. So, we are now in a dogfight with a J-27. And I just kind of stay over his nose and the retention of this thing is absolutely wild. It's not quite F-16. I don't really feel confident dogfighting F-16s at low speed unless you already have some position. They're pretty damn nasty and it's probably the better plane for Air Rugby, But this thing just feels a lot more like a plane. The F-16 is very limited when it comes to medium to high speed. And then the tornado, I cut that off because the missiles miss me. And he just rips his wing off. So, I mean, not much to show you there. And then lastly here... At least for the last game. I have some uh, clips where I showcase the R27 ERs in the last segment of the video. But I wanted to show you the carry games first. Because if you are interested in the missiles, you will just click the, the timestamp. And you will get there in due time. So we shoot off the two 27 ERs. And they're basically two free kills. We stay low. AIM-7F barely goes over us. But we took down two of them. And it only costs us two missiles. And that's the nice thing about the 27 ERs. They're super consistent. Do be kind of careful if people are notching you or flying away from you. They can go for a different target and sometimes go for the guy you're not locking. If that happens, do not break the lock. Just keep the lock rolling and it will still hit someone. Now, if you notice it going for a teammate, of course, it's a little bit of a different story. But I haven't been able to do that very often yet. And mostly when it switches to the wrong guy, it's another enemy. But I'll show you that in a minute. So we cut the afterburner. We cut the throttle quite a bit actually. Because with A9Ls directly on your 6. You do not want to be on like 90 plus percent throttle in this thing. Because very often they're just going to be ignoring the flares. And it will go right into your tailpipes. And you don't want that to happen. So we now chase the F-16. He map boarded. I turned around preemptively. So I'm now with a higher energy state directly on a 6. He's going super slow. And all I do is just lead the plane. And we just domed the pilot right in the back of the head. And let me tell you, this shell is pretty massive. Right now it's 2v1. Because, well, my second teammate just died to an AIM-7F. And I saw that missile coming in, so I instantly knew where he was. So what do I want to do? I want to make this a 1v1. I'm pretty confident that I can win a 1v1 versus another F-16. 2v1, it becomes pretty dire. So I lock the guy up. I'm going to be starting to lock him. But he actually starts notching and pre-chaffing me. So I took the wrong guy because the most guys don't actually do this most guys do not start pre-chaffing start pre-notching this guy is so now my surprise advantage is gone he is already notching he's and i'm just gonna shoot a missile off and i know it's not gonna hit but i want him to flare off i want him to dump his countermeasures because later on in the game if we have some separation and i can push that head on i have the advantage if he's out of chaff especially, there's going to be very little he is going to be doing. So I run away for a little bit. The other F-16 disengaged trying to cut me off to the airfield. But we're not actually going there. We're now going to turn around because I want to win this fight as quickly as possible. And then I accidentally lock onto the enemy missile. Kind of unlucky, but it is what it is. The guy chases me, he starts a dogfight and I have to take this because the other guy is not here yet. So I get the first angle and I'm behind him. I cut troll for a little bit, slow down just a tiny amount to get directly behind this guy. Hold the trigger down, plenty of ammo and then we go into a little bit of a sideways. Cut troll quite aggressively. We want to go a little bit slower, we want to fool that missile, we drop some flares and now we have position. Now if this goes on for too long the F-16 does get the upper hand but right now I am on him. He's going vertical so I can just stamp on the elevator and it will very easily pull into that shot. That's kill number 5. So here are some of the missile examples that I want to show you. These are very unlikely because if people are aware of you shooting them off they can very easily defeat them. It's basically the further away you shoot the missile the easier it is to fool it because you just have so much time to react to it. So I lock him up. He's at 22 kilometers and we're going very quick. So I want to wait for that little circle thing on the right to actually get within range of the enemy. And do I need to do this? Definitely not. But I wanted to show you just how far these missiles can actually reach. And I'm just going to stay on the deck. And if he shoots a missile at us in return, we don't really have to worry about it. This guy kind of just flies right into it and he ends up eating shit. But that's completely fine. Because there is a second guy directly behind him. So we do the exact same thing. We shoot it off. We go up a little bit. We loft the missile. And then we go into this bit of a valley. But we want to make sure that we can maintain lock on him. So I don't want to go too low. Because if he then puts his nose on us. He's actually going to start going down with us. Which puts him lower to the ground. Making the missile less likely to hit. So here I'm using the IRST mode. So I can find the enemies. 
but not actually won them yet. So I wait for him to get within a good range. And the second I notice he's about like 15 to 16 kilometers. I know this is a very easy hit. I switch on over to the normal pulse doppler. And at this kind of altitude, at this kind of range, he, he's going pretty quick. And I'm not sure if he's actually able to turn around in time. And exactly as predicted, he doesn't get to do that. So he goes down. It's extremely good. These missiles are absolutely nasty. And especially in the head-ons. You can launch them after your enemy has fired and your missile will reach them first. The main benefit here is not the range of these missiles. It's the fact that they're so damn quick. Because they get there so fast that they can't really react. And they have to notch the missile. They have to break off. And if they have a missile in the air, you've effectively, at least at the worst case, you have wasted one of theirs. Here we have Doofus number one. And I, of course, feel threatened by that name. So I have to shoot him down. Because there can only be one Doof. And then we go for the tornado. But I mean... Lamau. And this right here is exactly what I meant with if the missile goes for the wrong target. But you see it going for another enemy. Look at that. He's going directly for the MiG-23. So I'm just going to try and maintain the lock. And that missile is actually just going to go on his way and absolutely slap him out of the air. It's pretty funny. It's not too common. But if you see it happen, be aware of it. Make sure that you actually notice the missile and... Make it go for the target you want it to go for. Do not accidentally guide it into a teammate. So he comes in F-14. I'm just going to notch the missile. Missile goes dead. And then we kind of turn in. I don't want to turn in fully. I want to turn in. So he kind of maintains that 90 degree angle. And I defeat a second missile. So now we go into the merge. And I notice this guy is super slow. So I want to be careful with actually trying to reverse him. But I'm going to try to do it nonetheless in a different manner. I'm not really reversing him. I'm trying to energy trap him. So we go slightly vertical, we drop some flares, we cut the afterburner. And this guy, I mean, yes, he's pulling into us for now. But he's about to be out of energy, so it doesn't really matter here. Because we are going to be getting on the 6 eventually. Because he doesn't have the energy to pull after us, really. He notices this, but he tries to break off now. And because I'm already on this guy's 6, and I'm already pulling after him. He just ends up giving us his ass. Because keep in mind, I just did a full... 180 after he broke off and I still ended up catching him. But that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will show you another MiG-29 video very soon here. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.